everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited to have you back here with me today because today I'm going to be talking about traveling with a cat. Without further ado, let's dive in. When I've had enough of your beauty super excited to talk to you about traveling with a cat is because I have a cat. His name is Kishmir. He has traveled to four countries and around 13, 12 or 13 states. I take him everywhere with me and he actually loves it. Now, if he didn't like it, I wouldn't be traveling with him. I would either leave him with a friend or I'd find an alternative situation, but I'm so happy that I have the opportunity to travel with Kishmir because he just makes the travel experience that much greater and so incredible. I do want to share a few things over the course of the past few years that I've learned to save you the hassle when it comes to traveling with a cat. Now, you could be traveling on a boat, in a car, on a plane. I've done most with Kishmir. I'm definitely a planner now. After having traveled every country in the world, I've learned really how to plan my travels, not just for myself, but actually for an animal as well. And Kishmir is an emotional support animal. I'll talk about the differences about that in a second. I'm gonna go over more of the important things when it comes to traveling with a pet and an ESA animal. And then a service animal is a little bit different as well. Now, a lot of what I'm about to say actually has to do with traveling with a dog dog as well. So this could apply to you if you have a dog or a cat, but because I have a cat, I'm going to be directing it more towards cats. Cats actually have a more difficult time traveling. They're not as widely accepted as dogs. And I think that's due to the fact that a lot more people are allergic to cats than dogs. So you kind of have to be really careful about that. So if you like this video, please be sure to like it and hit subscribe to be notified for future videos. All right, now I'm going to take you guys with me on our trip to British Columbia. So let's go. All right, guys, considering it's pouring rain outside here in LA, it's supposed to rain all week, but this is the first day of it. It is pouring outside. I have my stuff right here. It's pretty much just this uh, carry-on suitcase, Kishi's bubble backpack, my little kind of hangy purse thing. I have a coffee here, and then I'm actually going to just bring my umbrella and get down the stairs. I live. It takes me 78 steps to get to the driveway from my house, so kind of sucks, but is what it is. I want to talk about the difference between emotional support animals and service animals. They're both very different and they're handled differently when it comes to flying with them as well. Now service animals, whether or not you know this, they're actually only considered to be dogs. So even though they say animal, legally as a service animal, it can only be a service dog. So service animals cannot be cats, they can't be hamsters, they can't be horses, they can't be monkeys, which, which could really help with a service to a human. But legally, and I'll put the links down below, it's only known as a service dog. And this is something that I had a very hard time coming to terms with because Kishmer actually saved my life on two different occasions. I consider that a service that a human would be able to do. But with that said, obviously cats can't really deliver medication on their back to their human. So I do see the point of service dogs and being able to do so. For the sake of this video, we're gonna be totally separating those two because when it comes to flying, you'll notice that there are definitely different regulations when it comes to traveling with a service animal and an emotional support animal. Traveling with an emotional support animal might seem to be more trouble than it's worth, especially since emotional support animals are mainly there for your mental health, which there's a lot that's encompassed in our minds and our mental health, and I think a lot of that is neglected and there's a lot of stigma out there. But if you depend on your emotional support animal for your mental well-being, then you should make the effort to travel with your emotional support animal if that's really important to you. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise that traveling with an emotional support animal is less important than traveling with a service animal. They're both equally as important in different ways. And actually service animals are also known to care for their owner's emotional state of well-being and mental health in the same capacity as an emotional support animal would. Which is kind of why I don't understand why emotional support animals just, it just can't be service animal. But I do have friends that actually need a service animal for their disability. And I do see how people could just say, I feel a little bit sad and so I'm gonna bring a service animal and then they could get priority over someone who actually really needs that service animal in order to survive, which I'm not going to get into it because Kishmer saved my life. So we'll leave it at that. Okay, now comes the paperwork. You don't want to skimp on this. I have a really nice folder that I keep for Kishmir, clearly organized with all of his paperwork that I can whip out at any moment in time and prove that he's free of this disease, he's neutered, he has his microchip, he's legal. I mean, whatever they want to know about Kishmir, it's in that folder. And of course, I have copies on my phone in case I lose that folder, but do not skimp on this. Whether or not you're an organized person, when you're traveling with your pet, just as you 
live with your children, you wanna make sure that you are especially organized for them more so even than yourself. If the person at the front desk is asking for a specific piece of paperwork, you know exactly where it is. So trust me when I say it takes maybe like half an hour to organize all this paperwork, but it'll be so worth your time if you plan on traveling with your animal or cat specifically. So the first piece of paperwork you wanna make sure to have is updated vaccination status. This will have all this basic information, including where he lives, your email, your phone number, his name, his breed, his sex, even a little picture of him is what they include in my paperwork. And it'll also have all this up-to-date vaccinations, which are really important. The rabies vaccination certificate, this is really, really crucial. You don't wanna go anywhere without the rabies vaccination. And if the airline requires any specific vaccine, or if you're traveling internationally, they might ask for specific vaccinations to be had on your pet before they arrive. You'll also wanna have their microchip information. And this is in case your animal gets lost, you know that you'll be able to find them. Whether it's on an airline or in an airport or in a new country, they don't want to assume liability for your animal if it gets lost. So a lot of the times, especially traveling to different countries, they will require microchip. I know for Bermuda they did and for Mexico they did. So really important that you have that. Another important one obviously is your therapy letter. It's an emotional support animal or a service animal. You want to have that documentation. Kishmir has a therapy letter from my therapist as well as an ESA card and certificate. And I have to renew that every single year. It's like $150. It's a pain, but it's worth it because I travel a lot with him. And so you want to have that therapy letter on hand and updated. Make sure it's up to date. Every year you'll have to update it with your therapist. And if it's out of date, then they won't let you on the plane with him as an ESA. They will let you on the plane with him if they have room as traveling with a normal pet. So you'll have to pay like $150. I've had to do that before, but they won't let you on with an ESA if you don't have that letter. And I do want to say that most times airlines will want to check this paperwork, even though you submitted it in advance, they'll want to check this paperwork once you actually get there. And that's the importance of arriving early to ensure that they can look over all this paperwork and make sure there's no inconsistencies. And then this isn't super essential, but I bring it anyways, cause you never know. I bring his spay neuter certificate. It just shows when he was spayed and that he's spayed. Sometimes when you're traveling to another country, in case your pet does run away and then repopulate, and then sometimes it gives them peace of mind to know that. And sometimes they will ask for it. So I bring it anyways. I also bring his ESA certificate, his ESA card and his pet passport, which we actually haven't had the chance to use. I got it right before we traveled to Canada and I actually asked border control if they would stamp it. And of course they said no. So if you do have a pet passport and you're able to get that stamped in foreign countries, let me know because it has not worked for me so far. <laughs> Now, of course, whether you're traveling with a dog or a cat, it's really important to bring all of their medication they might need if they do get sick. Kishmir is actually not on any medication at all, but sometimes when we travel, he'll get some diarrhea or he might throw up or something. At one Airbnb, he ate an ant and it was a red ant. You want to make sure to have your own little first aid kit for your cat. This is the diarrhea medication that I use for him in case he has diarrhea. I'll just put a little bit in his water and he'll lap it up. I'll also put some Fortiflora in his food. And actually this anti-diarrhea stuff you can get at Petco or any of those pet stores, or you can order it online. Highly recommend it, it really works for Kishmir. And the Florida Flora is just probiotics and really important to have if they are feeling sick to replenish the good bacteria in their system. So I definitely bring a few packets of that. I'll also bring some little tiny scissors to cut out the mat since he is a long haired cat. It's really important to keep up with that. So I'll bring a little comb, a brush and some scissors. And of course, I'll also bring a little toy for him, maybe a couple that he's really comfortable with and has his scent on it and has kind of the home scent on it. I like to make him feel comfortable. One thing I also do before I leave is after he uses the litter box for the very last time before we leave, I make sure to clean his litter box and make sure that when we get back, it's a fresh, clean litter box, properly clean, and I can just pour a brand new litter on there because when we get back from a long travel day, pretty much the first thing he does is use the litter box. Now I also bring my own travel litter box for him as well as litter on the side. And actually right here, I have his litter box. And I like to put this in a trash bag because obviously I can't clean it out every single time um, if we're staying in different hotels or whatnot. So I kind of have to wrap it all up with the litter in it so I don't waste the litter. And this is what it looks like here. So it kind of comes out like this. Very easy to close up. It actually has a little pin, uh, little clip right there. So I will put this in the tub actually just to save up on cleaning. So it looks like that. And let me just show you what I do here with the litter. Well, Kishi, come on, come on. So usually I will put the litter in the shower. This is actually a nice size shower. I'll take it out usually before I have a shower. 
but just this just saves up on cleaning costs. All the litter is flushable and everything, so I will just put this in here. I'm doing this one-handed, so I obviously keep this in two bags. This is the amount of litter that I do bring. Just to give you a size, it's about like almost half filling the litter box. So essentially, I just dump it right on in, and this is fresh, clean litter, fresh, clean litter box. You always wanna travel with a clean litter box because um, when you're traveling, they can pick up mites or whatever it might be. Just make sure to always travel with a clean litter box and some clean, fresh, new litter. This litter is unscented. I don't like the scents that like litters leave behind. So I will just put these bags right here because I'll use them again. And that's this litter. Hey, right, Baba? Right? He always knows exactly where it is. He sniffs it out to make sure. Hey, you're such a good boy. So that litter box is washable. So before every trip, I'll be sure to wash it and make sure it's properly cleaned before our trip. Nothing like a fresh, clean litter box to travel with. And kind of the same thing goes with his dishes as well. Before we leave the house, I'll be sure to put his water and food dish in the sink and clean it out and lay it to dry so that when we get back home, I can just easily fix him some food and water. And same with his travel dishes. So I always wanna make sure these are clean before we travel. Now these are really cool, compactable dishes. I wish they were like white, but they, make do and they're really compactable and great for carry-on. I'll put the link down in the description box below for all this stuff and I just make sure that these are really clean because obviously when you have food and water in there the bacteria can accumulate and you don't want your pet to get sick so you just want to make sure that these are as clean as possible at all times. His food I will put not near the litter box. You're not supposed to do that. I'll you know put it right here. Yeah, He's ready for some food, some dinner. I know. All right, so always make sure to double bag your food just in case of mites or whatnot while you're traveling. It just keeps everything more sanitary. And I always put his, you know, scooper in here to make sure I know exactly how much I'm giving him. He has about half a cup of food he has a day. He, if he eats more frequently, but a little bit less each time, then it keeps his metabolism up and I just find that he has less gas and everything. So right, Papa? He hasn't eaten though since this morning very, very early, so I'm getting a little extra. It's really good to keep your cat's diet consistent to what they have at home so that they don't freak out and try to eat as much food as possible because they don't know when their food's gonna come. You know, they should feel like they're at home. He's traveled enough to where he knows when he's getting food. He knows that there's gonna be a lot of food there in case he needs it, so um, he'll only eat to satiety. And then if he's a little bit more hungry because it's been longer than usual, then I'll put a little bit more in his dish. So yeah, he's a happy boy. Now, before flying somewhere, you wanna check with the airline to see what sort of restrictions they might have, whether you're traveling with a pet or an emotional support animal or a service animal. There's always gonna be some sort of restriction or some sort of documentation needed for any of those things. So, I think when it comes to airline travel, it's really important to pay attention to those rules and regulations that each and every airline has, because if you don't, then you're gonna have a lot of hassle once you arrive, and it's better to just save all that hassle and have everything prepared in advance. <laughs> When it comes to a pet in cabin, not an ESA or service animal, you'll likely have to pay a fee. It's around usually $100 to $150 per pet traveling the cabin with you. Now you can't take the pet out of its carrier when you're in the airport or when you're on the plane. Another restriction I found with traveling with a pet, uh, not ESA or service animal certified, is that the airline only has a certain amount of space on the flight for pets. So it might be three pets per flight, might be two, might, might be five, but it's really important to check beforehand, at least a month in advance. If you're booking last month, it, it might be tough to get your pet on that flight because they might be already full of people traveling with pets. You really want to make sure to schedule this in advance with the airline to kind of put your pet's name in there and let them know that you are traveling with a pet so that you can be counted as one of the passengers that will be traveling with a pet because oftentimes they won't let you fly if the plane is already at their max of pets traveling with their owners. <laughs> 
As much as possible, you want to avoid traveling with your pet when they're down in the cargo area. It's just not safe or healthy for them, in my personal opinion. When it comes to emotional support animals and service animals, they actually have to travel in the cabin with you because they're there for serving a specific purpose for the health of their owner. However, if you're traveling with a pet that don't have those certifications, sometimes they might say that the pet has to go down in cargo. And especially for international flights, if you can get past that, great. But that's sometimes the case I've found with a lot of flights. I know that because I will bring up that I'm gonna be traveling with a pet and then they'll say oh well that your pet has to travel in cargo then I say oh no he's an ESA they say okay they're allowed in the cabin so just make sure to check that <laughs> now a lot of airlines also have restrictions when it comes to the breed of the dog or the cat so you definitely want to check on that airlines website every single airline in the US has a specific area designated on the website that talks about the types of animals that they allow either in the cabin or in cargo. Now also know that some airlines have restrictions when it comes to weight of your pet and with cats this isn't really something you have to worry about much but when it does come to dogs it's something to take into consideration. Again each and every airline has their own restrictions so you're going to want to look on their website do a thorough look. If you have any questions call them and ask because it's better to know before you travel as opposed to once you're at the airport and you're trying to figure this all out and you're like well I didn't know this well you should have called to ask so just keep those things in mind when planning your flight and booking your destination some of the breeds that airlines like American Airlines for example have on restriction that cannot travel with them are example Boston Terriers pit bulls chow chow English toy spaniel I mean there's a long list so definitely make sure and see that your breed is not on that list if you're traveling with a pet <laughs> A lot of airlines also have the restrictions where the carrier must fit underneath the seat in front of you. This might be standard. If you have a bigger animal or dog, then you might have to purchase an additional seat for your dog to ensure that they can fit. A lot of airlines want to ensure the health and safety of your pet as well. So they want to ensure that your animal, your dog or cat can move around, whether it be below the seat in front of you or in the seat beside you. So you really have to check your carrier and ensure that your dog or cat fits properly in it and can move around during the flight. Could be a six hour flight, could be a 30 minute flight, it could be a 12 hour flight, but they want to ensure the safety of your pet as well. But with his bubble pack pack, and I'm so glad I got this because he can look out the back and see what's going on and not just be in a dark enclosed area wondering. I'll actually cover up the bubble sometimes depending on how he's feeling. I'll feel him out and see if he's feeling anxious or a little bit on edge and then I'll cover the kind of plastic bubble so that people can't look in and see that it's him but the sides he can see out. Sometimes I'll do that depending and it kind of helps ease his anxiety but I like to give him this little thing called Lixen right before we leave the house so I'll give it to him about half an hour before we leave. All right guys, so this is what the Lick Zen looks like and this is what it looks like on the plate. It's not a lot, but you know, it really gets the job done. It smells absolutely terrible, like a mixture of fish and chicken, but he loves it. So let me just show you. You want the Lick Zen? Bye. I'm aware. Oh my gosh, but you have to eat it. You want to too, you love this stuff. but it's all natural and he really likes it and it makes him feel a little bit calm. Yeah. Something you also might wanna know, and I know guys, these are a lot of restrictions and sometimes these go for service animals as well and ESA animals, but when it comes to feeding your animal food or water, oftentimes they won't let you actually take the animal into the bathroom and this obviously depends. I've been able to bring Kishmir in the bathroom with me, but he's also very small. They don't want your pet going to the bathroom on the plane, so just beware of how soon before the flight that your pet is drinking water or eating. I'm not gonna speak for dogs, but with cats, cats are actually really good with going away without drinking water or eating and when it comes to water you want to make sure that you're giving them little tiny sips of water throughout the flight not feeding him four hours before the flight and then feeding him sips of water until we reach our destination sometimes it has been a good 12 hours and he hasn't had a full meal I mean I'll give him little nibbles of snack tiny and then little licks of water but a full meal in like 12 hours or so honestly guys if you're traveling with a cat they'll sleep like 16 hours a day so it's okay. <laughs> Don't freak out. It's kind of normal for them to go longer periods without eating. Most days, Kishmir, he'll eat only in the morning when I'm up at like 4 or 4.30 in the morning. And then he'll want food like at maybe 5 o'clock in the evening. It just depends on your pet. But Kishmir is a really healthy pet. He's also very young. He's three. And he can go longer periods without food. I know dogs are different, but for cats, that's kind of how that works. <laughs> 
this goes without saying, but if you're traveling with a pet, whether it be a pet, ESA, or service animal, you want to ensure that you arrive earlier to your gate, even if you're not checking any bags, because it can take a little bit longer than usual. If there's something out of place with the paperwork, you want to ensure to have that extra time so that they can look into it and make some phone calls. Trust me, learn from my mistakes. I've been there, done that, where I've actually not even gotten on a flight because if something was messed up with the paperwork. It ended up being okay, but they just overlooked something and I was really short on time, so I was rushing and it just was a huge mess. So ensure to arrive at least four hours before your flight if you're traveling internationally. I know it's a lot of time and I'd say two hours if you're traveling domestically, just to be really sure. <laughs> Now every animal is different, but Kishmir absolutely hates being in the airport. He doesn't like all the people around him. He's not a huge fan of the security, like the conveyor belt and everything and all the noise. It's actually my least favorite part of traveling as well is the airport. So we're both kind of in the same similar situation there. I also want to note that yes, while every pet is different, my personal experience with traveling with Kishmir is he gets a little bit of anxiety in the airport and through the security. But once we're on the plane, he actually, he's calmer than I am. So he sleeps the entire flight. Doesn't matter if it's 30 minutes or eight hours, he'll sleep the whole flight. For some reason, he finds the, the planes really calming for him and that's just him. So when I give him Lick Zen in the morning, that's usually the only time I have to give him it, unless it's right before we enter the airport or while we're in the airport. As opposed to dogs, you don't just wanna take your cat out, especially if there's people beside you that you're sitting next to who might be allergic to cats or severely allergic to cats, you wanna be respectful of them. As Kishmir is an ESA animal, I can take him out of his bubble backpack during the the flight. However, if he were a pet, just traveling as a pet, then I would not be able to take him out during the flight. But whenever I do take him out as an ESA animal, the flight attendants know that know that as well, but in case they don't, you can definitely remind them, hey, this is my ESA animal and they'll be okay with you taking him out. Now this actually might vary on international airlines and international flights, but in the US it's actually legal to take an emotional support animal out of their carrier during the flight. But I would just be aware of your seatmates. Honestly, if you're not really a cat person or if you're allergic to cats and the person sitting next to you that close to you whips out their cat, and then there's hair everywhere that lands in their salad. I'm always very aware of that. So I make sure that the people beside me want to pet him or want to say hi or they don't mind. When it comes to traveling with your emotional support animal or pet in a hotel, most hotels, they oftentimes just will not allow ESA animals or pets. They cannot refuse service animals, however. But when it comes to emotional support animals and Airbnbs, the Airbnb legally cannot tell you not to stay there. However, if you have a pet that is not an ESA or service animal, they can refuse you, but they cannot if you have an ESA animal. But with that said, there are quite a few hotels out there that will allow emotional support animals and pets. Now, this is a lot more challenging with cats than dogs. A lot more hotels will be dog friendly and they'll say they're pet friendly, but by pet they mean dog. So cats are kind of excluded from that. A lot of times with Kishmir, I'll just travel in an Airbnb or I'll make sure to find a hotel that is cat friendly. Sometimes hotels that even aren't cat friendly will have a specific room designated to animals or maybe if they have a guest with a special circumstance, then they'll allow them to bring a cat and stay in that room. I'll put a list in the description box below of some of the best hotels that I've stayed in that allow cats, but when we traveled to Canada this past March, the hotel that we stayed in did allow cats. And not only that, they provided tons of treats for Kishmir, litter box, toys, everything. It was actually incredible. I've never had a hotel provide that much for Kishmir. Hey guys, so we have just arrived at our hotel here in Kamloops. That is Kishi. This is the Delta Marriott. And they have been so nice. Look at the gifts that they gave Kishi right here. First of all, this is a big litter box and these are all little treats, play toys, a scooper, litter, a little toy. I mean, seriously, they, they literally pulled out all the stops. I've never heard any hotel do this for Kishi. Another great hotel was the Four Seasons in Scottsdale where Kishi and I stayed and they openly, happily accepted cats, which I was so thrilled about. Another one was the Embassy Suites in Boulder and they loved having Kishmir there. So there are quite a few. You just have to do your research and be sure to call because even though they say they allow pets, oftentimes they won't allow cats and sometimes certain specific species of dogs as well that they won't allow. So be sure to call and check in advance. It's better to do that than to arrive and be completely blindsided and have to change your plans completely. <laughs> 
lot of the island nations will not allow you to travel there with your pet unless you're actually moving there. So Iceland, for example, is a country that I will probably never go to again unless I can bring Kishmer with me and I, I don't I won't be able to. I know they, they don't allow traveling with pets there. It might change in the future, but also Australia, unfortunately, I mean, they're gonna have to quarantine your animal for like a month. And if you're only there for a couple weeks then it's there's no point. So that's kind of a country that I probably won't be traveling to in Kishmer's existence. So it's like another 15 years. I'm fully okay with that. I've been to every country in the world. Of course, I'm extremely lucky to say that and to have been to every country in the world and to not really need to go back to places where I can't travel to with my emotional support animal. He's become so important to me at this stage in my life. And those of you who have an ESA animal or a service animal who help you get through life, then you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about. I know for a lot of people, it can sound bogus to talk about an animal this way, but for many of us who suffer from depression and anxiety, an emotional support animal or a service animal is kind of like how we're able to get through life properly. <laughs> it's amazing how healing these animals can be. And I never thought I would be kind of depending on an animal for my emotional state of well-being. But here I am at 31 doing that. And I know there's a lot of you out there. So just don't judge one another, break the stigma. Let's just support one another in this because it's the 21st century and it's okay to travel with your pet if they're an emotional support or service animal, or even if you're just traveling with your pet and you might not even realize you need them. You know, you just want to travel with them. Let's just be respectful of others. Okay, moving on. Now, when it comes to Canada and Mexico, I would say that those are two countries that are actually really good with a allowing you to travel into their country with your emotional support animal or pet or service animal. They tend to be really understanding, which is great. And just to let you know as well, Hawaii unfortunately has a lot of restrictions when it comes to entering the country with your pet. So be sure to check if you're traveling to Hawaii for vacation or whatnot in advance. I will try and put the links down below of where you really need to check the paperwork that you need to have to travel to Hawaii with your pet. Kishmir and I were actually supposed to head to Hawaii this past June for my 31st birthday. It was something that I needed to plan for months in advance. I mean, at least least four months in advance. I spent a lot of money over $500 to ensure that he had to get a specific type of testing. The amount of paperwork was immense and I did the, everything by the book. He got all his shots. They, it was the rabies that they had to check for. They're actually rabies free in Hawaii. So they tested him and that test was really expensive and it turned out that he didn't have it. We were approved, but then pandemic happened and we had to cancel the trip. And now if I want to bring him to Hawaii, we're going to have to go through that entire process all over again. Probably not going to be till next year, but it is worth Worth it, I would say if you really love your pet and if they actually help you and, and really mean something to you, then honestly going through this process isn't that big of a deal because it'll be so worth it when you can both arrive in that destination. Happy and healthy and have an awesome experience. <laughs> I bring little sentimental things when I'm traveling. Oftentimes I'll bring a candle with me and a lighter so that I have that if I'm if I'm feeling anxious, I, I can light the candle and just have a bath or just on my bedside table just to like ease my anxiety. And for him, you have to look at them as like, they're not humans, but they care too. When you don't clean the litter box out, it's why would you go to the bathroom in a toilet full of your own feces? It's like, they don't wanna do that. Why would you want to do that? Why would they want to do that? So just keeping a clean environment for them exactly like you would want. And also having those home comforts because it can just bring a sense of serenity to them that you may not know that they need. Thanks so much guys for watching. I really enjoyed making this video for you. If you liked it, please give it a like because it really supports my channel, of course. Hit the notification bell as well to get notified when I post new videos and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. I've had